Everybody knows about tic-tac-toe. Basically, anyone you ask knows how to play. It's the most basic game around. Take turns, mark spots, three in a row, bah, bah, bah. I can pretty much guarantee that you've played a few rounds yourself, and basically everywhere you go, you'll see the remains of past games drawn, carved, or placed. These markings trace back all the way to ancient Egypt. Again with three men's Morris. This game was essentially the same as its modern counterpart with the whole three in a row thing, except for the fact that you can run out of pieces. Once each player uses three pieces, then they take turns moving it around one space at a time until someone gets the three in a row. Then the Romans came along and made the game worse by making it so you can move the pieces anywhere on the board rather than one space away. This means you could block someone's move instantly and it would never end. I don't really understand how this works. Over time, tic-tac-toe or knots and crosses became what it is today pulling in millions of players because of its simple rules and short game time. However, it still hasn't stopped evolving, with a ton of variations popping up all the time. Reverse tic-tac-toe sounds like what it is, you try not to get three in a row, and force your opponent to get it. In no tac toe you both use X, making it really hard to win without setting up your opponent. Then in wild tic-tac-toe, you can both either use X or O. In SOS, you play for points, trying to form SOS, as the name implies. Some versions have a bigger board, but treble cross has one big line, and that's it. 3D tic-tac-toe is what it sounds like. Then we got some really complicated ones like quantum and number scramble. These are all interesting takes on the game, but somehow all of these have at least one major flaw. So now I need to fix this game once and for all. Tic-tac-toe 2. Okay, okay. Get a grid going. So to start, let's clarify a couple priorities for this update. First, it's gotta be easy to understand. Thumbs up. Keeping the learning curve as flat as possible while keeping interesting gameplay. Going along with that, it's gotta stay easy to set up and play basically anywhere. That's a pencil. The games can't take super long. Tic-tac-toe is everywhere because of how quick people mark their silly lines. It should appeal to casual players everywhere, but I think there should be a nice competitive scene as well. And last, it's gotta be fair. In the current tic-tac-toe, the first player has a huge advantage. To accomplish all these points, we'll take some good traits from the past versions, along with getting rid of bad ones. Now that we got that cleared up, let's get some things fixed up. Just to clarify a regular game, let's say X starts, then O, then X, O, X, X, O, and so on, until... Yeah, it's a draw. The goal is to get three in a row like I mentioned, but if you've ever played this game, you know that 90% of the time, nobody wins. Tic-tac-toe, more like tic-tac-tie, am I right? You might think this helps people not get hurt feelings, but it's such a simple game. Most people don't really care that they lost after a few seconds. So when nobody is winning or losing, it feels pretty pointless, along with being very annoying. So we gotta make a way to guarantee a win in every game. One route is to do what earlier versions did, where you can move your pieces, but that ruins the accessibility because you can't just mark it on a wall or something. You can't really move around ink and scratches, so that's a no-go. Or you could do the SOS stuff where you play for points, but that makes the game a lot less goal focused and nobody wants to tally that up at the end. We gotta think simple. Another way is to do what no tac -toe does, where both players only use X's, meaning someone will get three in a row every time. This is a better start, but I'm gonna switch it up a little bit. And here's my first point, who even decided on X's and O's? It's really simple, I get that, but let's get a more relevant symbol to replace them. T. This makes the name much more reasonable, with the tic-tac-toe representing the three T's needed to win. T, T, T. This is cool and all, but it's literally just no tac-toe but rotated, so it has the exact same problems as before. So I still want the T, T, T thing, because it's just too perfect. So how can we split up the T between two people? I got it! Vertical and horizontal line will be the players. This is actually gonna be sick. So imagine I'm playing as red or horizontal line against vertical or blue. I'll go here, here, here. So now blue wants this three in a row, but there's an occupied space. So what I do is also occupy the space. Then the game keeps going with red's turn. This does not count as a three in a row. You need to complete the triple T's, not the triple line. This way you need to be careful to help yourself, but not your opponent. Then the game keeps going until eventually one player gets the triple T and wins. This game is already a revolution at this point, but we gotta double check our work to be sure about the final product. Let's look back at our priority list. It's pretty simple in the rules, so we're good on that. It's just as easy to set up with these easy lines. Then it is a little longer to play because you need to connect the lines to make the hole and get three in a row of that. But the time change really isn't long enough to matter too much. 
Besides, how often do you play one game of tic-tac-toe? This is much more competitive than the previous version, with a lot more strategy and no draws. And finally, this seems to be way more fair. The starting player seems to have way less of an advantage, because both players need the tees to win. Good to have our priorities set. Now we obviously need to have a name for this game, and this is a little hard to come up with. Tic-tac-toe 2 is the obvious one, and I think we're okay to call it that. The only complaint though is that it's kinda long to say, with the tees getting in the way of talking faster. Then there's the silly answer where the creator names the game after themselves, like Tic Tac Oats. But I'm not a huge fan of that naming method, and I don't really want it to be permanently associated with Tic Tacs. I like them a lot, but they're not very related to this game. But now that I think about it, why is it even called Tic Tac Toe? I mean, Tic makes sense if you spell it T-I-C-K, like a tick mark, but T-I-C seems like it could be insensitive. Then Tac Toe have nothing to do with anything besides silly alliteration and I love me a silly alliteration. So I'm gonna steal that triple T thing because it works out with our new rules. First T will also be tick, now with a K. The second T will be oat, after Oats Jenkins who made the game. And the last T will be two, because it's the sequel to Tic-Tac-Toe. tick o 2 Let's rearrange here. Cool, now that everything is set up perfectly, let's add some bonus features. The grid board is super easy to draw, and that's super important for the convenience aspect, so this is a completely viable game style. However, the mix of all these lines could look a little complicated, especially without the colors. So I think to contrast that, we should add back some roundness as a callback to the abandoned circle mark. We'll start with a big ol' square, followed up by two round ovals, and this forms the nine spaces needed for these lines. And it looks much more unique, and it's way more functional visually, and it satisfies another T reference. Now for the deluxe version of the board, I'll draw this out professionally for those competitive players we're also catering to. Alright, that's sick, but I know you pro players might have also noticed, if the second player just goes always where the first player went, then no matter what, the second player wins. To prevent this situation from happening, don't do that. <laughs> you aren't allowed to go on the space that was previously played. None of that. So for example, if red goes here, you can't go here as blue, but you can go here. This way you can still complete the tease, but second player doesn't have an insane advantage, thus fulfilling the fifth requirement completely. All right, now let's add... I actually don't know. We made something pretty perfect, honestly. Tick Out 2 is simple for anyone to play, and it's a lot more interesting. Someone will always win, and it has a cohesive theme to tie it all up. I mean, seriously, I don't know what else to add without complicating it. So, yeah. I think this is it, guys. Tick Out 2 is totally flawless for real. I expect every one of you to play at least one game in the next few minutes, and to spread it to every single person you know. Let's get Tick Out 2 on the Tic Tac Toe Wikipedia page so then it can be spread worldwide. And speaking of worldwide, this video is brought to you by NordVPN. NordVPN takes care of your online security and privacy, which is much needed. For instance, if you just walked into a restaurant or coffee shop and connect to that free Wi-Fi, you just exposed yourself. Anybody can set those up and see data that you want to have protected. So NordVPN acts as a virtual cloak, concealing your browser history, messages, and other things you want to keep to yourself. They cover your tracks online, encrypt the data, and hide your IP address. Along with this, in one click, you can act like you're in a different country. This means you can watch shows and play games that are only available in certain spots. Many regions charge less for games and streaming services. This gives you even more value out of NordVPN and its virtual teleportation and as a very nice bonus feature. NordVPN protects you against malware, giving you an even smoother online experience. You can get four months for free with a two-year plan with code OATS, and it even comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee just in case it's somehow not for you. Head to nordvpn.com oats. There's no risk with that 30-day deal. Use code OATS, all that. Subscribe.